deep south location, deep south. <laughs> so I'm just going to very quickly get an update in before the storm hits. You can see we are already in drizzle phase. Just a little update on my deep south, um, just to keep this series going and consecutive so that it doesn't actually have too many gaps in between. The coming days is going to be quite rough out here, apparently. The ones that I want out of the mask are out of the mask. So this is another little like eek risk factor with my summer blooming fowls to remain outside and get another soak. See how long I can stay gutsy and leave them outside. Temperatures are mild. They won't go any below 18 degrees Celsius. So they'll be okay, I think, depending on how the downpour will be. But first of all, hi everybody. Thank you for joining me for this update on the deep south of my growing areas as far as I can still have them outside this time of year. I have my Phalaenopsis valacea here, the variety Cerula, the one that came recently from Großrechner Orchideen. And the only thing I can see here is my leaf is extending, the root is not extending. It's in the phase of getting acclimated, so I'm not, I'm not too fussed. At this point, I'm just thinking, let them get drenched again. Here is Phalaenopsis cornus cervi, variety Chatelandae. Strange that I only got one leaf this time around. No more leaves growing there. Still have a pretty little bloom though, but that's going to be history soon. And then I've got Zengmin giraffe back here. They all got an Epsom salt soak, uh, what was it, maybe three or four weeks ago. So I'm hoping to correct some of these issues here, because I do believe now these are issues deficiencies. I've got a new spike growing back here. Did not bloom for me this time, which was disappointing. There'll be another spike coming down in the crevice over there. And there's another one buried way down back inside that little nook there. Uh, gotta find the light, dude, because you're not gonna amount to much down there. My Leodora Sweet Memory, just chilling out. I'm kind of contemplating cutting these big two spikes off. They're kind of a nuisance when it comes to keeping them in the area where I want them. So I'm not entirely sure. I wish it would absorb the spike to make the decision easier for me. <laughs> My Shumborkia, Tomsoniana here. It's probably starting a new growth down there. Hard to tell, but there is a swelling. But now that it's rooted in, it can do whatever it needs to do, take its time. This one, this Myrmacophila from Fernanda, still rooting up nicely. Those roots are looking very promising. Very pleased about that. And my Chomborchia tibinsis, is it tibinsis? Let me say correctly, tibicinus, Nina. Tibicinus, there we go. It is, after a long, hard uh, year, year and a half, starting to root in to this self-watering setup. It took a long time, but based on all the structures that it's got, I just kept risking it. It has absorbed two structures in the back here, but I want it actually to be in this setup. It's a nice compact grower, that's what I like. And I figured that eventually it would bring roots down into the pot and it's doing that and it's not as wobbly anymore and you can see I took the wire off. So this one is good to go, really happy about that and I've got some swellings in the little apex here of this growth and another swelling there. These I have not seen before in any of the other growths. So there's something going on which is great. Tabasco Tex, doing nothing much. Next year, they are going to get a radical cleanup and then they will be potted up into bigger pots because this is now, yeah, this is now a little bit chock-a-full in there for sure next year. 
But I wish the roots would be a little bit more proactive. All my um, summer bloomers are not really, I don't like, I mean, apart from the corn of survey here, I don't like the spiddly roots on them. I have two of the summer bloomers now already inside. I don't want to risk it with them. And we'll see that when I do the West tour. Here we got Twinkle Red Fantasy going through some leaf drop changes here, but the spikes are looking amazing. Eventually they will amount to some gorgeous fragrant blooms. And I'll just briefly touch on down here where I've got my empty masks, but these two twinkles down here, they're not gonna get exposed to the downpour. I don't want to risk them getting soggy, especially the white fantasy in the back is not established. And the sanguiloba over there, the Rapiculus lelia, I'm babying that one new growth that we saw recently. And I'll do a comprehensive update after the rainy days of all my Rapiculus lelias because there has been some action, positive and negative. So we'll have a look at those in a separate video, but they're down here in the deep south. Moving across to the stand, waiting for a good shower. I fertilized everybody this morning and all the growths. I've found another new growth coming on this stand, this piece. So this one is gonna take off just like its compadre. So now there's three. Whereas before we saw two, now there's a new, I've seen a new one come out and there's three in total. And moving on to Kimmy, Holcoglossum Kimberlianum here. Also ready and in position. And there was a thunder clap there. I've got some new roots growing, which is great. Looking very shabby at the moment. I will be doing an orchid potpourri, cleaning up the moss. I can do all that after the rain. But here's the superb part where I cut it off there. I actually thought I was going to get a flower spike, but it turns out I have another new lead coming up here. So that's from the mother main plant, which was this lead and going all the way down when I bought it. These two fans grew on the left here out of the main plant. And now I thought it would be a spike, but hey, another lead coming up from where it was cut. Not stopping, not stopping. I love this orchid. If it would only just bloom. And then getting ready for the downpour is also my Angraecum Crestwood Tomorrow Star, my Jumeliana Aborescence, and my Angraecum Bossery, Angraecum Didieri, and my Plectrominthus Caudatus, as well as Phragmopedium Garen Weaver. I can't tell you how happy I am that the Plectrominthus here is doing superbly. I am so happy with these roots. And now with the rain, it's going to get even more active. It, it's just, it pleases me so much. You have no idea how I was a little bit concerned about this orchid and the black marks it was accumulating over the two years that I've had it. But never mind. Let me show you something. Let me show you something, not just the spider web, but let's go around the top here and look at that. Bossery has two spikes, one there, one there. I am over the moon. Look at that. I was not expecting that and I was happy not to have blooms to contend with. I love these orchids, even if they don't bloom, but isn't that awesome? I'm leaving those spider webs for as long as I can, but two spikes on bossery. Now I've noticed in other videos that when I move, my mic moves and the voice sounds muffled, so I'm hoping you can hear me. But more importantly, the visual of the spikes. Jumelia gave me a new a first bloom this year. 
and look at how beautifully it is now growing. It is really taking off. Two years of just getting acclimated and now look at the apex here. It's just shot up. There's a completely bigger difference from how the leaves came out before. And now look at the jump of the leaves and the apex. And Crestwood Tomorrow Star. What do you know? What do you know? Check this out. Ta-da! That is a spike. Isn't that awesome? Bossery and Crestwood Tomorrow Star, both in spike? I can't tell you if I could do cartwheels. No, I'll use the emojis instead. This orchid was not projected to bloom for five years. I've had it for three. I had two more years to go before it would bloom for me. And I have a spike. Now, another thing is to know if it's going to actually amount to a bloom or not. Sometimes when they're this young, they do abort. But at least I know it's in the next phase of its growth, maturity-wise. Very, very pleased. Can't wait for the downpour. Can't wait to see them soaked again. This is awesome. So happy. And let me keep them in line and the vision so that we stick to the orchids. I have brought out my ninja mount here with the Brassavola tuberculata. Get that nice and soaked. I want these roots to do something other than just be white. I want to see if they will or do absorb, absorb water because yes, I do spray them out now, but not so aggressively as I did in the summer. So I want them just to get really nicely drenched. I want to see how these new roots are responding. They need to get wet. And then here, Chao Praia and Papilionanthe. We've seen a lot of them lately, but the Papilionanthe, I don't know. I know I don't have humidity, so I'm the, why am I expecting these roots to actually continue to develop? I don't understand just stops, it absorbs water. And then down here, in the old part of the orchid, it actually brings out another root, and that's gorgeous. And that's what they're supposed to look like with these long tips. I don't care, just do your best for me, please. I'm trying hard to keep you alive in my climate. And Chao Praia is going mental up here in the broken apex. That's all going to be root central, but one after the other, incredible. I normally just have, you know, one and then down further another one and another one, but this is like, there's another one there. Let's do this. So one, two, three, four roots coming all at once. I mean, okay. Okay, I don't understand. You must be panicking. You must be thinking with a broken crown here now. Maybe if you've panicked enough, you could send out a bloom spike. That would be nice. So deep south, potential. It's gonna get wet. I hope it's not going to get windy. Can't I can't be done with wind, honestly. But we have spikes coming and we'll see how they deal with the coming conditions. And then just to sign off, if you don't hear from me video wise, then you know it is absolutely pouring with rain and I can't film at leisure. Everybody have yourself a wonderful day, evening, morning, whenever you watch this, stay safe. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.